Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, boys and girls, technical difficulties happen in the heart and in the head and everywhere else in between, but don't get it twisted because your boy is back. If you're within the sound of my voice, you must be in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals. We pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And, you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you do, because, quite frankly, you're listening right now. Uh, Please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, give us the old five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. We're pretty much available everywhere, over at Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. And plus, we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, do not hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook, we're on the Twitter, we're on the Instagram, we're on the TikTok, and we're on the Letterboxd for all sorts of fun updates. And finally... And I do dare say, most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because if we love to watch it and write about it and talk it, talk about it, guess what? We love it when you come by and read about it and listen about it. On this episode, we got a real, real interesting one. We are looking at a brand new film that hit video on demand platforms today. Uh, in some places where you are, it may be called Darklands, but for us, it is called Line of Fire, and it's the story of when a policewoman fails to act at a mass shooting, and in, there is an ambitious journalist who is looking to sort of restart her career, and she'll stop at nothing to exploit the story, exposing, ex, explo- exposing her family to the terrifying rage of a woman who who is left with a point with nothing left to lose. It is... It is a very poignant, it's a very real movie about sort of the abuses of social media, the abuses of the media in general, the uh, uh, the dangers of just judging people without sort of getting all the knowledge. And in just in this breakneck world that we live in, it's sometimes we got to pump the brakes and just understand uh, the facts and, and know what's going on in people's lives. It's something that tends to get forgotten about, and I mean, and this is uh, this is an Australian production, which uh, which is interesting too, because it, it deals with some school shootings, and I mean, they've had their big issues there with that, and obviously here in North America, we've had that too. But this is a very, very poignant film about just sort of the dangers of of not stopping to sort of understand and not put ourselves in someone else's shoes. Uh, like I said, it is on video and demand platforms now. It is called Line of Fire. But we had the unique pleasure of sitting down with the director of the film, the one only Scott Major, to talk about the origins of the story and sort of the, the challenges therein. And uh, indie filmmaking, I mean, again, this is indie filmmaking. They made it in a couple of weeks. And it's just, again, it's a really interesting piece of work. And I am so glad it is out there now on video on demand platforms for people to check out. Like I said, it's called Long in a Fire. It is available now. Go check it out. But first, check out our talk with Scott Major, because between you and me, it is a darn good one. All right. Well, I mean, obviously, just to kick it off officially, just, you know, again, thank you so much for the time today. And congratulations on the film, man. It's a hell of a watch. Yeah, great. Did you enjoy it? It's been, it's, it was it was a bit of a journey of both uh, getting it up and running and uh, shooting it in 15 days that we and um yeah no it's it's i'm so glad that people are out in the world can finally get to see it well i guess that that dovetails right into my first question man walk me through sort of the origin of the story on your end uh i got bought on board uh the the there was uh christopher gist who's the writer sarah mabry and shana sheave uh who are all producers they've sort of brought me on and uh presented the script to me and uh, and the I, I read a lot of scripts and this one was just a page turner um you know one and originally actually it was um two two male leads um uh and then during the casting process we sort of we sort of um discovered that this story would be i guess um not have more depth well maybe more depth um uh with the sort of maternal aspect to it um if uh, we went to two female leads and then uh, yeah we, we sort of did two years of weekend pre-production and trying to get their finances together, crewing the film, doing all that kind of thing. But when we got to the film, 
we sort of had one week of official pre-production and three weeks of shooting. So it was very quick. Wild. No, I mean, I'm curious because obviously like a story like this, especially for Australia, I mean, I know it, it hits home and I mean, the issues of school shootings are definitely, you know, a prevalent thing. I mean, obviously here in North America as well, but I'm kind of curious. I love the angle of this story of taking it sort of the perspectives of both, like giving us both perspectives, like the journalist who's trying to sort of reclaim her, you know, her position in life, but then the cop who, I mean, you can say she didn't act, but at the same time, it's like, you know, one person, active shooter, you know, trauma, you know, you never know what's going to go on. You can't judge a person in that situation until you're in that situation yourself. It really makes for an interesting psychological dynamic. Well, I, and I think I think exactly what you just said is exactly the point, which is we all in this day and age do judge people without knowledge, without walking a mile in their shoes, without even without even putting their shoes on, without even walking a mile. You know what I mean? And I think with social media, we're all uh, we're all keen to to just jump on people who we perceive may not have acted or perceive may have been you know a cow or perceived to to do this, and that's kind of really. Uh, the angle for this film for me, I mean, uh, Nadine Garner, who plays Samantha Romans, you know, she she asked me early on when I was asked her to do the role, she goes, why does the world need to hear this story, Scott? Why, it, you know, it's, it's quite a brutal story. It's quite a severe story. Why do they need to know? I said, well, I, I think the world is constantly being dehumanised these days. And I think this film really does, you know, really violent, no, not a violent, but I guess a, a confronting way, um, uh, tries to show you the humanity of these two people. That, yes, this woman is, as you said, trying to get her career back up and running. And the angle she takes without, without with, with her selfish angles, without considering this other person's trauma, this other person's history. Um, and then, and then uh, you know, and when we discover as an audience, um, S- Samantha Romans, you know, what, what she's been through in her life, what trauma she's gone through. Um, and I think we as an audience probably judge her early on and then and maybe later on consider that maybe we've, you know, jumped to conclusions. <laughs> How important was it for you in this to... I mean, at least for the most part, cut away from like sort of depicting the trauma and just have it be more psychological and perceived. Because I mean, at least for me, that's where this definitely hit home. Rather than seeing the violence, just imagining the emotional impact of the violence. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think. Um, we, and we look, we did, we did actually um, did have an option where we could have seen it, um, and then we, uh, you know, we looked at it, uh, the film, and. And I think the perceived violence with our with we as humans can create something so much more um, confronting than what uh, any filmmaker can show almost. Um, so yeah, and I and I think the story is not about the inciting incident. It's not it's not about what did or didn't occur on in that moment in the school. It's about these two humans and their journey from from that you know from that moment that that's obviously but you know it's the catalyst but it's not the story no i mean i've got to imagine for you 90 percent of the job in something like this has to come down with casting because i mean if you don't have two actors who aren't sort of very capable and up to this psychological duel that's going on then it's not going to work absolutely and and um you know um nadine garner who plays samantha Roman, she's she's been um on our screens in australia since i was uh, i would say you know, without sound, making her sound too well when i was since i was about 12 i would suggest i've been watching nadine uh and samantha samantha told she's um she's just a brilliant actor who i've known for many 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 years and we we had a rehearsal process because obviously we're shooting this very quickly we had a rehearsal process we 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 Everyone bought in. Everyone, uh, it took a long time to convince both actors to play the, these roles. But also there was a big, as actors, you know, we don't want to judge our characters. And it could be very, this, this these these characters could be played very, you know, over the top or very, you know, arch or all these kind of things. But I think the, the beauty of this film, and which comes from those, from those two beautiful performers and the other supporting cast, obviously, too, is it's really grounded in truth. It's really grounded in reality. And I think that's, what makes it even more, um, I guess, disturbing for an audience to watch that these are two real people. They're not a heightened version of anything. It's not John McClane in a in a building jumping out. You know, these right. are really two. It, it's it's a it's a normal situation, and these are these are two really normal humans struggling with everyday life. Are those is that the kind of story that sort of draws you in as a filmmaker? Because I mean, I know you started off as an actor, and I mean, 
is that like for you when you want to tell stories do you want to tell these very sort of very much gritty sort of honest psychological stories as opposed to maybe sort of spectacle or or sort of sort of something else because this is to me a very sort of a film very grounded in sort of human emotion on both on so many different spectrums yeah i mean that that's what really speaks to me uh, as a filmmaker or a storyteller um and uh, look i <laughs> I, I guess I'm, I'm a hippie at heart too, but um, I, you know, I, I want to change the world for the better. And you know, sometimes the, the only voice that I kind of have, because I could never be a politician, too many skeletons in the closet uh, from years in the industry. So I guess my my way in um, is, is to tell to tell stories, but not preach either. To to tell a gritty, real story that people will take their own lesson from it. I'm not going to lead people to water and tell them how to drink. You know so to speak it, it's it's about creating uh creating a story or an issue or a, or, or a you know a journey that people can relate to and then maybe walk away and consider consider their world and how they treat others um from that moment on because i i think if um if jamie connard had her time again the character in the film she would have um she'd take a different path <laughs> for sure man absolutely now i mean i've got to ask like i'm curious how does working on a film like this differ from you for you for say like saying jumping behind the scenes for an episode of neighbors which i know you've done quite a bit of yeah um the two uh apples and oranges is very hard to compare but uh, look at directing and directing is directing and storytelling is storytelling um i guess the thing with especially indie film and i think um don't get me wrong. I love neighbors. I've loved my time on neighbors, and I've, I've uh, and but um, it is a soap opera, uh, and we all soap opera has its has its um, and also in television too. I'm jumping around a bit, but also in television, as a director, you, you go in there and do the job. You collect the shots, and then you hand it over to the producers for them to finish right. there because they are the over overseeing people. But with the film, and you know, the producers and I were very close on this as well. You, you know, um, you've got this beautiful um beautiful and and and, and uh, ugly story in the same breath um that everyone's on the same page to tell the same story um and because it was such an indie film and such an indie crew and such a short shoot we we all and we, uh, in this industry we all become family that's you know it's been said many times before but everyone's there because they believe in the story everyone's there not this for a paycheck because there may not be a paycheck they're there because they believe in the story they believe in the script and they're there to support and bring that to life because they believe in the story and for me that was just that's just the most beautiful um you know i can't even call it work the beautiful collaboration and um and journey and nobody's on this project for the catering if you want the catering go back to neighbors i'm sure you probably had a better, better catering set up there I, I, I actually to be honest uh the producers did such a brilliant job getting amazing caterers on this this <laughs> this is what literally kept the crew happy we had a whole week of night shoots like starting at like 5 30 p.m and going through to like 6 a.m so the food had to be good and it was good that's one thing we've got to say about uh the line of fire <laughs> no i mean i've got to ask because obviously i mean in australia like you're almost in a bit of a bubble in and of yourself from an industry standpoint from you know compared to north america or the rest of the world but at least i found over the past few years a lot of the great stuff that is coming out of australia is starting to bubble up and get a lot more noticed sort of internationally and i'm kind of curious on your perspective on that because i mean again on one end you can sort of be in your local industry and doing that. But then when stuff starts to get noticed outside of the country, I can imagine it's sort of a different experience as well. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, it's one of those things, I guess. I, I, I just look at what's in front of me at the time. Right. So doing all these interviews, such, such, such as with yourself. And, uh, and there's been, you know, there's been a bit of press about um, this film coming out in North America, which is amazing. Now for me, I'm starting to go, Oh, I, I, and I, Ultimately, and this sounds like I'm just saying the right thing here, but ultimately, I just want everyone who worked on the film to get recognition. I want everyone to, to for, for, for what I just said before about us all getting in there and having faith in the story and you know wanting to tell that story. I want everyone who worked on it who may not have been remunerated um, or may not have you know or all those sorts of things who did it for the love for them to be able to say I was part of that film and to get success worldwide or get a small amount of success overseas or to be recognized overseas that to me means that we've we told a successful story and that's and that's ultimately what we wanted to do 
And it's one that resonates on so many different levels for sure. Now, I mean, just yeah. to start putting a bow on this, it's a dumb question, but it's one I've got to ask. Can, <laughs> can you think back to your younger days? Was there something that you saw as a young man on TV or at the movies that had the light bulb go off for you that made you want to get into the business? Um, look, I, my my, I, I have a very, very interesting, like I used to watch on repeat the Rocky Horror Picture Show, Caddyshack, and the Blues Brothers. So I don't know what that says about me. There's nothing too gritty in there. It's all yeah, fairly... Um... The cloth then, man. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, look, I, to be honest, I um, I fell in love with um, all sorts of movies and all sorts of things. But, yeah, I, I think I was I was literally fascinated. We, uh, I come from a different generation. I mean, my first VHS player, you know, tape player, the remote control had a cable attached to it. So it wasn't really a remote control. <laughs> So, um, so it's a kind of a different era, but I was, so what I'm saying is when video came into the house, it was, it was just blew my mind that we could watch these things in the house. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. I love, oh man, I love that you're dropping the cable, the, the connected remote, man. I had one of those two back in the day. It's, it's people forget about that, but I mean, that was a legit thing. <laughs> it was. <laughs> no, I mean, just to put a bow on this, I mean, at the end of the day, People are going to be, are, are starting to see this now. It is out in the universe for consumption. Like, what is your hope? Audiences pull away from this because I mean, again, after watching this, this is such a this is such a humanistic story that I mean, it's, it could have taken place anywhere. It could have happened to anyone. I mean, and I think that's kind of the point. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. That, that is the point. And, and I guess honestly, that's what I I hope that that people who come and see this film just think twice before. Jumping on board the bandwagon and, and and abusing someone who's gone through a horrible situation, or you know, or, or judging people before you know their story. That's what I hope, and, and honestly, that's the message I want this film to have. And you sometimes to tell a message, you know, you can be really lovely and kind and put them in the classroom and all clap and say kumbaya, but sometimes you know it, it, you need to slap them in the face. And I think this was what this film does. It, you know, it really slaps you in the face and it goes, hey. Just, just, just realize that um, you know everyone's humans. They're not just, they're not just a a, 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 um, a person on the other end of the keyboard. Yeah, the news cycle and the social media news cycle—they move at such a breakneck speed, man. It's we need these reminders like this to to occasionally pump the brakes. And I mean, I think this film does that and then some. But I mean, Scott, yeah, again, thank you so much for the time today, man, and congrats on the film. No, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs.